A crack team of rabbit researchers have discovered a new land, rich with resources, ripe for the taking. You and your fellow bunny barons scramble to this new world, eager to claim for yourselves the vast natural wealth it provides. Amidst the clamor, one thing is certain, this new land ain't gonna colonize itself. Join me on the floor to learn how to play Bunny Kingdom by Richard Garfield. Before we get into today's video, we need to acknowledge our sponsor, my cat, for generously allowing us to use her floor space for this video. Of course, she only did so on her regular condition that she be allowed to enter and exit the frame as she sees fit. So if a cat jumps into this video, don't be alarmed. It is just our sponsor making her customary call. <laughs> In your box, you've got a board. Unfold it and place it on the table so that all of your friends can reach it. Excellent. Now you'll bring out the pastel bunnies and each player will choose the color that they want for the game. This is usually the time where you initiate the combat rounds to determine which player gets the purple bunnies if you happen to own Bunny Kingdom in the Sky. I do not own Bunny Kingdom in the Sky, so I'm just going with the best color in this box, which is, of course, the pink bunnies. Your friends will receive several of these small plastic bunnies. Please inform them that they are free to arrange them in any way they see fit in their player area. They can use them to create little symbols, perhaps formations. They will just need to pick one delegate from their bunny army to place on the zero in this scoring track on the right side of the board. Once everybody has done that, you're ready to populate the board with cities. The cities that you receive in the box will come with different numbers of towers. You'll have cities with three towers, cities with two, and cities with one tower. You'll take the cities with one tower and you'll place one of those cities in each of these city spaces that you see on the board until your board looks something like this. You'll have a bunch of cities left over. After doing this, you'll just take all of them and put them in a pile on the side of the board. There will also be a bunch of cardboard tokens in your box. You'll take all of those tokens out of their bag and place them in a pile beside your board. You'll then take the hefty deck of cards you'll find in the box and you'll give that a shuffle. Now this deck of cards is really big. I do recommend breaking it down into smaller chunks and distributing those chunks among your friends. So you can have a little bit of a shuffle party. After everything has been shuffled, you will assemble the game's deck and place that deck of cards on or near the board. You will then deal a hand of cards to each player. With three players, you'll deal 12 cards. With four players, you'll deal 10 cards to each player. Once everybody has a hand of cards, they'll be able to look at those cards but not reveal them to any other players at this time. And then you are ready to begin the game. Bunny Kingdom takes place over four rounds. In each round, you and your friends will have a drafting phase, followed by a construction phase, followed by a points phase. Let's start with the drafting phase. In this phase, you will look at the cards that were dealt to you, and you'll pick two of them to keep. You'll place those two face down in front of yourself and pass the remaining cards to the player on your left. Everyone will be doing this simultaneously. After everyone has picked two cards, they will flip over those cards, revealing them to the table and resolve their effects. Unless they picked a parchment card, which will look like this. If you picked a parchment card, you will not reveal that to the table. Instead, you'll keep it face down and place it in a secret parchment stash. After everyone has revealed the cards that they chose, or of course, set aside their parchments, they will resolve those cards. There are a couple of different cards in the game. The most common ones will look like this. They'll have a letter and a number in the top right corner. That letter and number indicates a territory on this board. When you play a card with that letter or number, you'll pick one of your bunnies and you'll place it onto the space indicated on the card. So we have an A8 here. We'll go on our board. We'll look for A, 
8 and we'll place our bunny there. We are now considered to be controlling that territory. Once you've placed your bunny, you'll discard the card. Some cards will give you a building that you can place on the board later. These buildings will look like this. They'll have a little icon in the top left corner and they might have a little icon next to them indicating what type of territory that building can be constructed on. When you flip a building face up, you'll collect the cardboard token or plastic building miniature corresponding to the type of construction you picked and place it on the card. In this case, I picked this cinnamon building. So I will find the cinnamon token in the pile of cardboard tokens near the board and I'll place that token on top of the card. There are also provisions cards. When you flip those over, you'll just grab two cards from the top of the deck and resolve those immediately. And those are all the different types of cards available in the deck. So after you've resolved all of your cards, placed your bunnies, grabbed buildings and placed them on your cards, then you'll grab the stack of cards that was passed to you and you'll repeat the process, picking two cards and putting them face down in front of yourself. You'll continue drafting, passing, and revealing until all of the cards have been drafted. After all the cards have been drafted, you're ready to move on to the construction phase. During the construction phase, players will have the opportunity to take the buildings that they chose during the draft phase and transfer them from their cards to the board. Doing this is extremely simple and follows three rules. Number one, when you place a building, it has to be in a territory that you control. So if there's a bunny in the territory of your color, you can put your building there. Number two, you cannot place more than one building in the same space. In addition to your plastic bunny, there can be a maximum of one extra token. Rule number three, is of course that when you place that building, you observe any building requirements that may be printed on that card. This city, for example, will need to be placed in a mountain territory. Once you've placed a building on the board, it cannot be moved from one territory to another, and you are not obligated to place all of the buildings that you have in front of you in one phase. You may choose to keep them in front of you and place them during a construction phase in a future round. Everyone can place their buildings simultaneously. As a matter of fact, I personally recommend doing that to keep the game moving at a nice pace. The only construction that has an exception to this rule are the camps. Each camp has a number in parentheses next to the title on the card. If multiple people have camps to place during the construction phase, they will each read off the number that is printed on their camp card. The person with the lowest number will place their camp first. When you place a camp, you'll choose an unoccupied territory somewhere on the board, and you'll place the camp token on it along with a bunny of your color. You're now considered to control that territory until another player on a future round drafts the territory card corresponding to that territory, in which case their bunny will remove your camping bunny and the camping token and take permanent control of that area. So everyone will read off their priority numbers. The person with the lowest priority will go first, followed by everybody else in ascending order. Bear in mind that this applies if a player has more than one camp card. So if my opponent drafted camp one and camp four and I have camp six, they will place two camps before I get to place mine. And that is the construction phase. Super cinchy. After everyone has placed any constructions that they wish to place, you're ready to move on to the scoring. The scoring phase in Bunny Kingdom can be a little intimidating. It may, after all, involve this awful looking multiplication table that will probably give you flashbacks from third grade math. I believe in you. You have what it takes to master this. So let's get into it. You will score points based on fiefs here. So we've got two words, fiefs and territories. A fief is defined as one or more territories that you control that are connected to one another. So let's go through some fiefs just so you know what they look like. Here is a fief. You'll see it's made up of one territory. 
This territory is not connected to any others, so it is a fief of one territory. Here you have multiple bunnies in a row, a fief of one, two, three, four territories. Since they are adjacent to each other, they are considered to be in the same fief. We have two fiefs here. You'll notice that these spaces are separated by this lava gorge. Now that you understand what a fief is, let's talk about how to score them. The manual will tell you that to calculate a fief's point value, you multiply its strength by its wealth. What does that mean? A fief's strength is the number of towers in it. A fief's wealth is the number of different resources that fief provides. This fief, we've got one, two, three towers and two different types of resources. So three times two is six points. In the scoring phase, everyone will identify their different fiefs and score points for each of those fiefs. After everyone has scored points for all the fiefs they have on the board, you're ready to get into the next round. Deal out a fresh hand of cards to all of the players and start drafting. And there you have it. You rinse and repeat, do that four times total, and the game is over. Everyone will then retreat to their parchment libraries and dig out their dusty old parchment scrolls and reveal them. And I usually like to go one player at a time to make sure we don't get any like weird calculations, mistakes, and we score up all of their different parchments. Couple things you should know about the parchments. Number one, some of them will refer to the number of resources you produce. In those cases, you are going to count every space that you own as providing one of those resources. So if I have six bunnies on territories that provide wood resources, then that is six wood that I'm producing uh, for something like the Woodland King, who will give you points if you produce at least seven wood. Some parchments will have a golden carrot at the top of them. Those are treasures and you just straight up score the number of points specified by the card. And that's everything. When everyone scored up all their parchments, whoever has the most points becomes the bunny ruler. So that's how you play the game at three and four players. How do you play the game at just two? It's very simple. The rules are substantively the exact same. The drafting phase will be a little different. Each player will receive a hand of 10 cards. They will also receive a stack of 10 cards that are called the reserve. They'll leave this stack face down in front of themselves. During the drafting phase, players will first draw one card from the reserve pile in front of them and add that to their hand. They will then choose one card to play and lay that face down in front of themselves, just like in a normal game. They'll then choose one card from their hand to discard and they'll discard that face down. You might create a separate face down discard pile for these, or you can just discard them face up to the discard pile afterward. I think it's fun to have a separate face down discard pile and then you never know what's being discarded until it's gone. After each player has chosen the card they wish to play, you'll reveal those just like in the normal game and resolve their effects before passing your hand of cards to your opponent and repeating the draft. The placement of buildings and the scoring of fiefs are the exact same in a two player game. And that is how to play Bunny Kingdom. I hope you have an excellent time playing this game. If you have any crazy game sessions with it, any wild upsets or something you just want to talk about, throw that in the comments section. We'd love to hear about it. And I, I think that's about it. Play nice. Fief. Not fief. Fee, 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 fee. Great.